Hello and welcome to Kids Can Sunday School. I'm Eden. And I'm Sarah. And this morning we are going to start off with our memory verse. Our, mem- our memory verse this week we are, for, we are using the New International Readers version. Yeah, that's a tongue twister kind of. Yeah. It can be, yeah. And it's from Colossians 3 verse 13. Put up with each other. Forgive the things you are holding against one another. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. We are going to talk more about this in a little bit. But first, my mom has a question for us. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Eden, what's the highest number of cartwheels you can do in a row? Well, I know it's above 10. But I think 14... 15, you know. So around 15? Yeah. We'll call it 15. Yeah. Now, what about you guys at home? How many times can you bounce a ball, like a basketball, or a ball like a basketball, in a row without um, messing up or losing count? So, like, maybe, like, Eden, like, around 15, or maybe more, 25? Around 15, you start to get dizzy. Yeah. Like, maybe 50, maybe 75? hundred, maybe more than that. Sorry about our dog there. He's outside now. So we are talking about, could you bounce a ball a hundred times maybe? What about 490 times in a row without having the ball roll away or without stopping or without losing count? It would be pretty hard to do something that many times without making a mistake. What would you do, Eden, if you were called a mean name, not just one time, but 490 times? And what would you do if they, that person who called you that name said sorry every time they called you that mean name? I would start not thinking they were sorry and like the hundredth time. Would you, so you would, would you be able to forgive them all those 490 times or would you, would you kind of stop forgiving them? I would try to, but it would be really hard. It would be really hard. The thing about Jesus is that he asks us to do tough things and sometimes forgiving is one of those tough things that Jesus asks us to do. We're going to check out our Bible reading today. And he talks about forgiveness today in our Bible reading. And it reminds me of the, of our memory verse today, put up with each other, forgive the things you are holding against one another, forgive just as the Lord forgave you from Colossians 3 13. So I want you to think about our memory verse. As Eden reads our scripture passage today, where's it from this week, Eden? Today I'm going to read from Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. And I'm going to read it from the Deep Blue Kids Bible. Awesome. Ah, I'm trying to find the page that I marked. Okay, (laughs) here we go. The Parable of the Unforgiving Servant Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, Not just seven times, but rather as many as seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, They brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant didn't have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he should be sold along with his wife and children and everything he had, and that that the proceeds should be used as payment. But the servant fell down and kneeled before him and said, Please be patient with me. I'll pay you back. The master had compassion on that servant, released him, and forgave the loan. When the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owned him 100 coins. He grabbed him around his throat and said, Pay me back what you owe me. Then his fellow servant fell down and begged him, 
be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. But he refused and said, instead, he threw him into prison until he paid back his debt. When his fellow servants saw what happened, they were deeply offended. They came and told, and told the master all that had happened. His master called the first servant and said, You wicked servant, you, I forgave you and all that debt because you appealed to me. Not fellow servant, just as you also have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you. His master was furious and handed him over to the guard responsible for his punishing, for punishing prisoners, until I had paid the whole debt. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Thank you, Eden. You're welcome. So. Our passage today starts out with Peter asking a question. He wants to know how many times is the right amount of time to forgive someone when they do something that hurts you? And he tries to answer the question himself. He says, is seven times enough? And in Jesus's time, it was customary to forgive people three times for something they did before you didn't have to forgive them for that thing anymore. So when Peter said it seven times enough, he expected Jesus to say, well, that's a really generous offer, Peter, and that's a great answer, and you're you're a super great guy. But instead, <laughs> yeah, I know. But instead, what happened was Jesus had a different idea completely, and it depends on what translation you read. In the translation Eden read this morning, Jesus said... You should forgive 77 times. In other translations, it says you should forgive 70 times 7, in, which is how many? What is 70 times 7? Um, let me think for a second. I do have 490. 490, oh which is why I used 490 in our little discussion oh, earlier. Explains. Yeah. So, but the point is whether it's 77 or 70 times 7. Jesus wasn't talking about an exact number. He just wanted you to have a, a number that was kind of impossible to keep track of. Because if I say, Eden, um, clean your room, and you say, okay, Mom, I'm going to clean my room, and you don't do it, and I ask you that over and over again, and you don't do it, I'm not. I'm going to lose track before I get to 77, <laughs> before, I, before I keep forgiving you. I'm not going to be able to keep track of that. And I'm certainly not going to be able to keep track of it 490 times. It's not about the number. It's about the idea that we're supposed to start thinking about forgiveness differently. We're supposed to have a, a forgiving heart that's open to forgiveness all the time, no matter what happens, no matter what is done. And so then Jesus goes in to a parable to explain this idea of thinking, this idea of doing things a new way of being open and forgiving all the time, no matter what happens. So he tells a story, this teaching story. Let's look at who's in the parable. We have a king. We have a servant that owed the king a lot of money. How much did the first servant owe the king? 10,000 bags of gold coins. That is a lot of gold. Yeah. That is so much gold that he could probably never repay it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Never. So I want you to think about it this way. You probably earned one gold coin for a day of work back in those days. So if this wow. person owed 10,000 bags of gold, it was probably so much money that he could never repay it even if he worked every day for the rest of his life. So a lot of gold. Which is the point of the story. It wanted we, He wanted to be a, an amount so much that it could never be repaid. So, could you imagine owing someone that much money? No, I can't imagine. It would be pretty overwhelming. Yeah. So, what did the servant do? He goes to the king and he says, Please, 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 please be patient with me while I work to pay off this debt. Please, 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 please have patience. And the king says, You know what? I'm going to forgive your debt. He's compassionate. He shows him mercy and he forgives. But then we come across a second servant, a second servant who owes the first servant 
a measly 100 coins, a debt that is much, 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 much smaller, easily repayable, 100 days. 100 days is like a little over three months, right? If yeah. there's 30 days in a month, a little over three months, that could easily be repaid. And after being forgiven such a big debt, you would think he would want to do the same thing to this other servant, but he does the opposite. He gets angry with this man and he says, you owe me a hundred coins. Give, you gotta give me those coins or else. And he says, I can't give you those coins. So he gets mad and he has this poor guy thrown in the, the prison. Well, you heard what happens. The king finds out and the king calls back the first servant and says, I had mercy on you. I showed you compassion. You should have shown this other guy compassion too. Because you didn't, you're going to end up just like him in jail. So we know a parable is a teaching story, right? And the things in this parable represent other things. So the king, who or what do you think this the king in the story represents, Eden? I think God. The king does represent God. Who... Or what do you think the first servant who owed the big debt, the 10,000 bags of gold, represents? Um, That's kind of a tough one. The people are us. The, the first servant is us. The first servant is all of mankind. Like The first servant is us, represents us. Who do you think, or what do you think, the debt of the 10,000 bags of gold represents? I don't know. That's a hard one. Yeah, that is a hard one. That that 10,000 bags of gold debt represents our sin or all the stuff that separates us from God. We can never do enough to get rid of that stuff on our own, which is why God sent Jesus for, to take care of that for us so we wouldn't have to worry about it. What do you think that second servant represents? It's also kind of a tricky one. Uh, all right. um, all the people who need forgiving. Very good. The second servant represents the people in our lives that we need to forgive. We all know people, or we all are going to come across people that are going to hurt our feelings or do things that make us upset or do things that we feel are wrong that hurt us. Sometimes instead of forgiving, we stay mad or like we talked about last week, we want to get even with them. Our job is to do the opposite, but when we stay mad, when we stay angry, when we don't forgive, we're just like that first servant who the king threw back in jail because he chose to not forgive that debt. Even though we've been forgiven for of a debt that we can never repay, when we choose to not forgive the people around us, we're just like that first servant. Because God has forgiven us of so much, our job is to extend that forgiveness to the people around us. You guys have heard me say in class before that one of our jobs is to be representatives of Jesus here on earth. And one of the things that Jesus came and did was come and extend forgiveness. When we forgive people, we're, we're representing Jesus. There's no better way to represent Jesus than to forgive. That's what Jesus wanted his disciples to do, and that's what Jesus wants us to do. And if we think back to that memory verse, forgive, I can't remember it exactly, and I put it on the floor, so let me pick it up. If we think back to that memory verse, put up with each other, forgive the things you are holding against one another, Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. When we put that into practice, we are being like Jesus. And when we be like Jesus, we show him to everyone around us. And that's what, what, that's what our job is. That's what we want to do. So let's say a prayer and ask Jesus to help us do that. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you that you came and forgave us, Lord, for all the stuff that gets in the way from our relationship with your, with your Father. Thank you that we are forgiven of a debt that we can never repay. 
Help us to be forgiving people, Lord, even when it's hard. I thank you that when it is hard, you help us to forgive. We love you, Lord, and we pray that you will help us in all the things that you want us to do. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. And this week for our craft, we're going to retell the story through pictures. You can either draw a single picture of it, or you can make a comic style retelling. You will find comic style paper in your take home packets. And remember to send the pictures of them to my mom via text or email at Christian at pfumc.org or post them on the or post them on the Kids Cam Facebook page. That is all for us today. See you next time. And let's turn it over to Miss Karen for our science this week. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. Miss Karen here to do some more science with you this week. Miss Sarah is talking about forgiveness. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Now, what happens if we I, if we don't forgive? We, I, we take, I, I, we take that I, I, our forgiveness. We don't give it to each other. Well, we bottle up I, our I, some a, I, anger and hurt, and it stays within us, and it gets bottled up. Well, that frustration stays there, and well, it ends up doing. I, I ends up getting bottled up until so much ends up there, and then we explode. Well, let's see that in science. Okay, so we're going to need to gather a few household uh, items and, uh, if you want to do this with us. You'll need a Ziploc bag, a tissue, a quarter cup of warm water, some vinegar, and a half a cup measuring cup, some baking soda, and a teaspoon. Oh, and don't forget, safety first, you need some sort of eye protection. Now, of course, my regular eye protection is back in our science lab, so I'm just going to use a pair of sunglasses. So start by taking your tissue and pulling it apart so that you have only one sheet. We only need one layer of tissue for our experiment. Now, you're going to want to put three teaspoons of your baking soda right in the center of your tissue. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to fold this over and kind of make a little package. Okay? And then we're going to set this aside for a second. And we're, uh, we're going to take our bag. We're going to dump our warm water inside of our bag. Okay, and then very carefully we're going to pour, and this is where I'm going to put my, my eye protection on because vinegar, we wouldn't want that to splash into our eyes. We're going to pour out a half a cup of vinegar, and we're going to carefully pour that into our bag with our warm water. Now, I'm going to close my bag most of the way. I'm going to leave a hole just big enough to put my package in. Now, we want to move quickly, okay? This is going to start to happen very quickly. I need to drop my package in and close the bag as fast as I can, okay? Now, what we're going to notice is that we're going to get a, a reaction. Notice those bubbles. Now those bubbles are reaction between the, the baking soda and the vinegar. Those bubbles are, 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 are carbon dioxide or CO2. It's not, uh, it's not air, it's carbon dioxide and it's going to start filling the bag. Notice that the bag is starting to get big. Now, that's like your anger and your hurt that's filling, I, I, that's filling you up when you don't give your, I, I, your, when you don't give forgiveness to one another. And it starts to get, it starts to fill you up and fill you up. Right? 
and you get filled up until I, I and I and look it's start, it's starting to fill them up I, it's filling that bag up I, I really fall it's starting to get pretty tight in there so when we start you know I it, I'm it starts to get to the point where there's not a lot of room for anything else inside of your body but anger and hurt for I I I for that other person until what till what happens Look at that there's there's I can't even push on that I I on that anymore There, I that that anger and hurt fills up the bag. I, I fills you up so much, and you're just having such a hard time. Look at how look how full that I and that bag is. Look how I I it is so I it is so full. It's so I so angry. I I, I you've got no room for uh, for happy thoughts. No room and no room for I I for anything else. guys oh there we go till you burst <laughs> until that anger until all that anger until all of that until all that frustration finally make it makes you burst and you've got nothing I until you've got nothing else I, I know where else to put it and you finally burst and you find and you finally end up exploding on those around you and sometimes you take it out on the people that you weren't you weren't even angry at, and then you and I, I and and that's no way to live. So instead, we should give forgiveness to I, to those I, I around us. It's important. I, it's important that I, I, I that well, that we give those I, I, those I, I I we give I, I forgiveness to all of those around us. God says, give forgiveness. Seven times 70 times. Bye, guys. See you next time.